Okay, folks, let's uh, do the members' request stock pick video. First stock up is going to be Freeport McMoran for fellow member Tony, FCX the symbol. Tony, you could see that we did, oddly enough, on FCX, put in a higher high, prior high, 37.67, new high, 37.76. But it couldn't capitalize. It's a breakout point failure. It failed, pulled back, attempted to rally. Now we have a lower high, and now we've confirmed that breakdown by breaking down below 33.52. We're looking for support at around the 31.76 level. We have some bottoming tails. I think we can still come down here. I wouldn't really get involved with the stock until we see the 31.70 area or the 200-day moving average, which is even better. Stock is right now in a confirmed downtrend. Next stock up is from fellow member Chris. Next couple of ones are for Chris. Symbol G-U-R-U. -U. All right, Chris, we have a lower high, prior high, 25.65. New lower high is 25.59. We have broken down below support. We are now in a confirmed downtrend on G-U-R-U. -U. Odds favor shorts. We are at support. I would not open up a short position at the support level. I would wait for an attempted rally to try to recapture the 50-day moving average. If that fails or if it appears poised to fail, then you can open up a position and add to that position on a continuation breakdown below Friday's lows of 2441. Next stock up is ITB. These are the Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction. This is an ETF. And we have resistance at 2496. We went into a flag formation. However, it could not hold $24 per share. Very similar to what happened with Axel, AXL the other day. So the, the index is breaking down. My attitude towards the U.S. home builders is that I think they're going to do okay in the U.S. in spite of rising rates in 2014 due to the fact that if rates, rates begin to rise dramatically, you're going to have new home purchases that were scheduled out for 2015 or late 2014, perhaps get moved forward, helping out the, the home builders. That being said, my opinion is worth nothing until we find support. And we may be at it because here's your breakout point, 2364, which was in a, that was the upper end of a trading range. Now, what you would expect to see if this is a healthy, healthy ETF is for it to consolidate against this level. And then if I'm writing my opinion, that consolidation should lead to a good, healthy breakout above 2496. So if you see a setup for a rally, meaning we're seeing bottoming tails defending the 2367 level, then you could open up a position and I might just well do so as well. And then build on that position on strength above 24.96, so on and so forth. Next symbol. VUG, this is the Vanguard growth, this is the Vipers. I'm not sure what the underlying stocks are in this exchange traded fund. We did manage to put in a higher high. But we have broken down below support at 91.06. And we closed pretty much at the 50-day moving average, just a few pennies below it. So we're going to need to see whether or not it holds the 50-day moving average. Next support level is going to be at 91.56 and then $90.06. So look for support at those levels. I wouldn't touch it until then. The oscillators do not look pretty. I, 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 I think you're going to see lower lows on the Vanguard or the VUG, especially if we get bad economic data and the Fed follows through with taper. Next stock up is for Barry, MVAX, NASDAQ stock. It's not a quite a doji star formation that it formed on Friday. It's actually more of a bearish formation. Good bottoming tails here at $6.13. I wouldn't be a buyer of NVAX right now because I don't think the risk reward is in my favor. However, it's certainly not a short. 
and you might just see some further upside to the stock. I don't see any reason to sell it just yet. It's still holding above trend. Down volume was below average. Watch your down volume bar. If that rises on Monday to the downside, then the story may change. A little bit overbought on the ADX line, extended on the Stokes. So there's no doubt that the stock is extended. That being said, it can stay extended on the indicators. So if you're concerned, then you may want to book half profits and let the rest ride. I certainly would not open up a position here. And I would consider scaling back on my holdings given the extreme overbought level of some of the oscillators. This is for fellow member Jerry. He wants, to te wants me to take a look at the SPY and the comp. Um, SPY, we managed to put in a higher high. However, it could not capitalize on it. Breakout point failure. I've been saying that, using that phrase quite often. It's the fact that we break out above prior highs after a consolidation and fail to continue onward. And then we roll over and then take out recent lows. That's a breakout point failure. Down on huge, huge volume. I do not like the spiders. The comp. NASDAQ composite. I'm on the weekly chart. I'll stay on it before I go to the daily chart. Note the choppy action. MACD very, very extended. There's nothing about this chart that I like. Absolutely nothing that I like about it. I would avoid it like the plague, especially on a break below 4,100. This is key support here. We break below here. Say goodnight, fellas. It's going to be a sell-off. So I would not touch the NASDAQ. In fact, we are short of the Russell 2000 for new members. Next stock up is Monif, M-O-N-I-F. This is for fellow member Russ. We're in a weekly chart. We'll stay here. We pulled back from recent highs at $1.38. I remember this one having a pretty good chart. I went over this on for Russ a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, here it was. And we've pulled back. Back then, I mentioned the topping tail. We did manage to fight through it. And then we broke down below trend. This was really an ideal area to stop out of the trade. Here's your next support level here, Russ, right at $1.10. And that looks like fairly reasonable support. Let's check the selling volume. Selling volume increased on Friday. Okay, next stock up is for Russ. Uh, Google. They, Google saw a lot of selling pressure into the close. In fact, let's go to the 30-minute chart real quick. Our 30-minute chart, huge, huge volume bars into the close. You would have thought that this reversal bar would have been met with more buying into the close. It did not. Institutions took this opportunity, this reversal, as an opportunity to sell. How do I know it's institutions? Checked out the volume bars. That is not mom and pop selling 100 shares. All right, so to the daily chart. Daily chart, you're going to look at prime, initial support at 1,120. I think it fails. I think we're going to come down to 1,060 as being a far more reasonable support level. But you have one, two, three support levels. 1,120, 1,100, and then 1,060. I like 1,060 because that was a pivot point. It pulled back to retest that. It's a confirmed support level, unlike these other levels. GSS, this is for JT. JT, this is a good chart, man. Um, this is a weekly chart. Good double bottom setup. We rallied topping tail last week. Resistance at the declining 50 period moving average. Here's your pivot point at 85 cents. I wouldn't buy the stock until we got a breakout above. Actually, scratch that. I wouldn't buy the stock until we closed above 75 cents and it consolidated. Then I would add to that position on a breakout above 85 cents, breakout at a close above 85 cents. Weekly chart is looking really good. I'm positive on the stock. Let's check out the daily chart. All right, this is a sign, this candlestick is a sign of indecision. 
even though it closed down on the day, I think the odds favor longs given this long candlestick. They tried to take it down. They couldn't keep it down. The, the, the bids came in to support the stock. So I think longer term, the stock looks good. Look at this. That's good support here. Double bottom setup on stochastics, and it rallied. So GSX looks good. Just going to have to have, show some patience with it if this market begins to really deteriorate. CYTR. This is for our fellow member, Pat. I'm on a monthly chart here. Resistance, Pat. Topping tail so far this month. Note on the monthly chart, monthly candlestick, these people back here, these buyers, are now looking to get made whole. So you have overhead supply of the stock. I'm going to drill down to a daily chart. We are breaking out above resistance on the slow stochastic. So that's a positive. Good, good volume. Real beautiful volume. So we have institutional accumulation. Daily chart. And so here's your pullback from last week. Look for support at $6.75. I I'm open to buying the shares as long as you're using a, a stop loss just below. Give yourself some room, maybe $6.50, $6.49 thereabouts, and then move to the sidelines. Let it find a bottom. Otherwise, you can open up a position, small position, add to that position on a breakout above $8.24, and that's the way to play this one. Next stock up, VTI, Vanguard Total Market. These are the Vipers. This 30-minute chart, you can see the selling pressure into the close. It grew, huge, huge volume at the close. Again, not mom and pop selling 100 shares, institutional distribution. We closed right through the 50-period moving average. Here's your next support level, 91.68. So I wouldn't think about touching the VTI until 91.68. We might, might find some support at 93. However, I don't like that as much as I like this support level right here. This was a pivot point back here. Breakout, pullback, retest, pullback, retest, pullback, retest, pullback, retest. So we know that there are going to be buyers down here. Huge volume to the downside. So, uh, to be honest, I, I wouldn't step in right now. This is just as a trade. I certainly wouldn't add to any of these stocks, with the exception of NVAX and CYTR right now. I think that most of these are really, you may, want, you may see a, a, a rally off of these levels. Folks, with all of these that I'm giving you support levels on, especially the ETFs that I've gone over so far, with the exception of ITB, which I think is as a little bit better story than the overall market indexes like these Vipers or um, the Spiders, etc. I think that the market index ETFs that I'm going over, I think they're going to find support. That, that as I've mentioned, I think they're going to rally, and I think they're going to fail. So I like these off of support levels mentioned as trades only not as investments. So please understand when I say it's going to pull back to, say, 91.68 or $92 per share, sure, it probably will rally off of this level. However, it's probably going to roll over and break right through this level again. So just be aware that I like them on a rally as a trade only and then get out. KIOR, daily chart. This is for... Chris, we're in a downtrend here, Chris. We rallied off of $1.30 up to $1.57. Looks like we're breaking down once again. We're probably going to take out $1.30. We've seen this story over and over again. I wouldn't buy the stock. So, Chris, to, to me, this is an avoid stock. I, I'm not seeing really good opportunity here. Unless, of course, we retest $1.30, consolidate, and then you have a W formation set up with a pivot point at $1.57. Otherwise, I'm not seeing an opportunity here I would avoid. Next stock up is GYRO, extreme oversold stock, 13.42 on RSI. Looks like it's going to try to defend $6.93. I have no problem with this stock. Good double bottom setup here 
oversold on the ADX line. I like this one. Look for a double bottom setup here on the ultimate oscillator. Let's drill down to a 30 minute chart for opportunity. Good key reversal on the 14th, and it's just sat here and consolidated. This is worthy of a look at the short interest. All right, there's not much in terms of short interest, uh, half a percentage point. There's no opportunity for a short squeeze here. I don't know what the deal is with this dividend. Return on equity of 58.7. the heck is this thing, Chris? Um, oh, it's a REIT. All right, so that makes sense. In New York, you're with me. Okay. Uh, I don't see an opportunity for a short squeeze. I don't know how safe this dividend is. Dividend just seems way too good to be true, and I doubt highly that it's safe. I can only speak to the technicals on the chart. The technicals look good. I think we can get a pop out of it. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Good support here. Wow, this is a real blast-off point one time before, back in 2010. So I like it. It's probably going to be a little bit risky, but I like it. So GYRO, we'll add that to our watch list. Thanks, Chris. All right, this is for fellow member Kevin, CIE. We went over this one a few weeks ago. I remember, Kevin. Um, we had a nice rally. 50-day moving average is acting as resistance. We made a higher low on the stochastics. I, I, I don't see a good risk-to-reward entry point here, unless, of course, we see a pullback to this lower band of the rising uptrend channel. That would be your best, best risk-to-reward entry point. We have come down to fill the gap here, so we may hold at... The lows on Friday, however, again, I think the best risk-to-reward entry point would be a nice pullback to the lower band of the rising uptrend channel, especially in light of the market weakness. ARIA, this is for Kevin as well. Pharma stock, good little chart. This is a daily chart, topping tails on Friday. Big volume, institutional accumulation. Good double bottom setup here on the Stokes. That's always a bullish sign. So I, I like the stock, but it's it's really gotten past its breakout point, past the $7.75 level. It did so on Friday. I would like to see a little pullback. And if it can pull back and defend this support level right here at $7.75, then I'd be a buyer of the stock. Let's take a look at the intraday chart. Maybe that'll give us a better setup. All right, so here's a good setup on the 30-minute chart. Uh, good bottoming tails at $8.80 intraday. But remember, intraday charts, the closer you get in duration, time frame, the more volatile the chart. So a daily chart is far less volatile than a 30-minute chart. A weekly chart is far less volatile than a daily chart, so on and so forth. So just keep that in mind as I'm discussing these charts. The, we have bottoming tails at $8.80. I like to set up, put a stop loss, or I would put a stop loss if I wanted to swing trade this right below $8.80. If I'm wrong, so be it. It pulls back down to $7 and what was our $7.75. That'll be my re-entry point at a lower price if I get stopped out. So that would be my game plan with ARIA. ZA, Zuan Fashion, I don't like it. Uh, it looks like we're probably going to test the $1.66 level again. This is what happens when you see topping tails at resistance, folks. And probability of further downside is fairly high. Down volume was above average. It's got to hold 166, 168. If it doesn't, I would avoid it like the plague. And I wouldn't touch it until it came down to that level. Last stock up is ORM, Owens Realty Mortgage. This is for Chad as well. Uh, good looking chart. $14 per share is 
definitely support. Your resistance is a 1479. I think it's a safe stock to buy with a stop loss just below $14 per share. If you want to be even more conservative on your stop, place it right below these bottoming tails here, right below $14.25. It's a little bit too tight for my taste, but it's just for very conservative traders. If you want to be conservative, that's fine. And I would add to the position on a close above $14.79. Keep in mind that RSI is already at 80.96, so it's very overbought already. But that usually means that it will head higher. So this is a momentum trade. I, could, I would, again, buy it, use a stop loss below $14.25 or $14 per share. If we close above $14.79, you can add to it. Then I would convert my stop loss into a trailing stop loss on a percentage basis and get out when the market takes you out. And that's it, folks. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, and I'll talk to you soon.